what's Armenian Zargatsman? It's a mixture of the international development with all those smart indicators, all the logical frameworks, and the Armenian spice and the Armenian flavor. We call it Sektor Matsu. We call it <laughs> development with Sektor Matsu. So Armenian Zargatsman is this mixture, and this is what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to focus on one specific aspect, gender programs of Armenian Zargatsman. The idea for this talk came from a random postcard that I received from my friend. It had a quote by Sharon Stone, and she said, at some point, we found ourselves turning into the man whom we wanted to marry when we were girls. <laughs> that was strong to me, and it made me think, is this what usually happens to a woman? Are we really turning into men when we're becoming successful? Are we surrendering somehow our identity? And is this what happened to her, <laughs> <laughs> or her, <laughs> or even her? I mean, she is successful. She probably got the highest level of her career. She didn't do her best in her personal life, but she is successful. Do we surrender some part of our identity when we're successful? And are we at all designed for success? So. Talking about the design, I love this trendy discovery channel and selection of species thing being projected on human beings. So I try to do that. Try to look at the mammal part of human beings and see how we're designed. So Angus Bateman, um, he's a geneticist, an English geneticist. He lived back in the 20th century. He suggested, and this is a positive disruption, I'm sorry. He suggested that women are invested in the evolution because they invest in producing and caring for their offspring more than males. And he said that's because sperm is cheaper than egg. Not because of the quality, but because of the quantity. He <laughs> says that millions of sperm in humans and in mammals stand per one egg. And it's a terrible ratio. I was like, is there a production error? <laughs> and this. But the key here is not about the production error and not about the ratio, but this is about competition. And this ratio that provokes this competition. And what Angus Bateman calls the sperm competition for this evolutionary advantage to grow one single one, the most viable one, makes men the best in any competition and in any race. Men are more, live more advantageous lives. They compete more, then win, they win more. They get the highest height in their career and in all the spheres. Um, they have a shorter lifespan, though, because of this kind of life. But I mean, they manage to fit somehow into this time frame. And mean, meanwhile, women, the investors in the evolution, because of the importance and the value of the investment, they're becoming more protective and usually more conservative. We compete less and we win less. And that's probably where the evolution takes us. And if we ask the evolution, are we at all designed for success? Um, the answer would be probably, probably skeptical. <laughs> you might be designed if it wasn't about competition. <laughs> so this is a TEDx talk eventually, even if this is a positive disruption. And you wouldn't believe my ha 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 if I didn't bring any charts and any statistics to you. So I got some statistics. Armenia Zargatsman is on since early 1990s, even earlier than that. Development agencies invest in Armenia millions of dollars, more than millions, in gender mainstreaming, in equality of rights, in economic and political participation of women. And I assume that we have a situation quite comparable to what we had like a few decades ago. But I'm a nice devil's advocate, and I will take a situation longer than a few decades ago. 1918, this is the first Armenia Republic, beginning of the century, after World War I, after with a nation that survived the genocide, a devastated econo economy, a completely ruined um, republic. And what they did, they were the first, among the first in the world who granted women equal rights to vote and to be elected. And you know what? In the Armenian parliament in 1918, we had 8% of women. And I assume that this is a quite of a solid background to build a democracy tradition on and to see what the democratic, the de democrat, democracy promoting donors did during these years, at least during the last decade. So I took last year parliamentary elections, millions of dollars invested, even more positive discrimination 
in the law to grant women a mandatory presence in the political parties. Nine percent. I mean, a hundred hundred years of development, so much invested into it, and nine percent. And then my question is again: Is this a production error? And my question is to the development agencies. But probably you say that women are not political creatures. They're probably we're not very good at politics. And we might look at other situation of our country, let's say family, because women are more, more attached to these social things. So I took some statistics from the last decades. I looked at how marriage and divorce ratio changed during the last decade. And you'll be surprised, women are getting more higher education in Armenia. Women are getting some economic opportunities because of the development programs. Men are leaving the country and they're flying the country, leaving their houses without a house, without a breadwinner, and sometimes just permanently leaving their families. And the ratio of divorces, it doesn't go up. The highest divorce ratio was last year, during the last decade, and it was like 0.4% of increase, which is even not beyond the statistical error margin. And the marriage rate, it has been growing and growing during the last decade. That's I mean, that totally ruins my understanding and perception of what's going on in this country. And to me, that's a total zargatsman. So I thought that if I'm so much confused, probably there is something deeper than what we're looking at at the figures and at the data. Probably there is a codification that we're missing somehow. So I woke up my um, philologist, me and try to play my favorite etymology game. I started to look at the words, the ones that um, indicate men and women. I took the words and looked at how they behave when something really crucial happens to them, like marriage. So I took English language as a representative of Sharon Stone and Armenian language as a representative of Armenian Zargatsman. Let's look at the words. The word man means a human being in English. It means it's a general term for human being. It's neutral in terms of gender. And what happens to man when he marries? He transforms, he changes his name, he gets a new name, he gets a new role, he becomes a husband. That's a huge transformation. The word woman in English, it comes from the old English wifman, which, which means a female human being, a female human. And I love this word because it has this balance of um, female and human nature in it. What happens to the woman when she marries? She drops her human identity and keeps her female identity. She becomes a wife. This is gorgeous. She's less exposed to change than men in English, but she still changes. In Armenian, Tagamart stands for men. It means a male human being. It doesn't mean a neutral human being. It means a male human being with an indication of his masculinity standing in front of the world. So what happens to this human being when he marries? He transforms completely, he changes his name, he changes his role, and, be and he becomes Amusin. In Armenian, Kin, comes from the old Armenian kin, <laughs> and it means kin. <laughs> it doesn't mean a female human being, it doesn't mean a neutral human being, it doesn't even mean a human being, it means a kin. And what happens, what happens to her when she marries? She's still a kin, <laughs> she doesn't transform at all, she doesn't change her name, she doesn't change her role. This is, you can think that this is a genuinely conservative and protective thing if you're in Armenia, if, you're an Ar if, you, if you call her in Armenia. So you legitimately can come to the so what question. Does it mean that the development agency should not invest in Armenia into gender programs at all? Does it mean that this is an absolutely hopeless thing? No, she doesn't think so. She just asks for a closer look at her, call it a qualitative research, call it a profound needs assessment or whatever. Just have a closer look at her and then she might disclose that there is one single instance when she changes completely. She changes her name, she changes her role. She even implies this balance between mm, I, between men and women, between her male and female natures. That's when she becomes a mother. And on the positive disruption, disruption side, and to respond to this wonderful atmosphere in this yoga retreat, 
I suggest that we go through it, that we breathe in and breathe out, saying not om, but saying my. That helps a lot. So if you <laughs> breathe in, <laughs> now you're there. <laughs> Thank you.